All right, class. So we're going to start today. So if you're on today, you have to review day because on Monday, you're going to have your second exam. So we're just going to review. So we're going to start reviewing by going over yesterday quiz. And then we'll do the practice exam review on Canvas. All right, so this was yesterday quiz. So like something you probably should have done, you could list out all of the different type of shapes. So you could say like, okay, we have two triangles. You have two squares. You have two circles. And also you have two stars. Also something you could have done, you could list out all of the odd numbers. So you could say odd numbers are 9, 15, you got 5, and you also got 3. Then you could list out the even numbers. The even number, you have 12, 6, 14, and 4. All right. And if you remember, you have a total a uh, eight shape because if you count how many shape you see you should only count eight of them all right so for the first one you say find the probability of star so we just want to find the probability that we randomly select a star so for this one all you have to do is go like hey there's two stars right here and you divide that by eight and you get 0.25 Wait, right. so the numbers inside didn't mean anything? No. Oh my God. Yeah, because I went over that in class. I said the number just represent uh, identity of the number, but of the shape, but it doesn't mean anything. Um. All right. So let's go ahead and do the second one. So it said probability we get an even number given. So remember this over here mean given. So saying given is a square. So first you want to just look at all of the squares. So you have two squares. So of those squares, then you have to ask yourself, how many of them are even? Well, there's only one even number. So that's one out of 12, or sorry, one out of two. So that's 0.50. And that's what you had to do for B. Everybody good for, well, sorry, not B, for two. All right, let's do three. So if you look at three, it said probability that you could get a, a square and a star. So if you look at all of the shapes here, if you look at all of those shapes, none of those shapes, we have a star and a square. You either could get a star or you could get a, uh, or a square. But it's kind of impossible for you to get one shape that's a star and a square. So for this one, that's 0%. Cool. 
Some of you try using the multiplication rule, but for the multiplication rule, you only use it if they tell you they did multiple selection. But if you look at this one, they don't tell us they did multiple selection. So you just, <clears throat> so you just have to just assume that we're doing one selection. So that was it for three. So let's do four. So if you look at four, it says probability of a star shape given is odd. So right here, we have given again. So the given in this case is that the shape has to have an odd number. So let's go back. And where you get all the odd numbers. So we have this one as an odd number. We have this one as an odd number. We have this one as an odd number. And we have this one as an odd number. Oh, 12 is not an odd number. And we have 15 as an odd number. So if you look at it, we have four odd number. So we divide this by four. Then you have to go, of those four odd number, how many of them are a star? Well, you only have one of them that's a star. So you got one out of four, which is 0.25. And that was it, four, three. Yeah, for these, all grades are final. And especially for the quizzes, like, it kind of like, since we have so many quizzes, it really doesn't matter if you fail like one quiz because pretty much all of the other quizzes should pretty much lift it up. So if you fail one quiz, cause there's 20 quizzes. So like one bad quiz is not really gonna affect your grade that much. And like if you fail all quizzes, that will affect your grade. But if you fail just one quiz, like it shouldn't affect your grade that drastically. All right, so let's do number five. Here. All right. So if you look at this one, say find the probability, you get a circle given is a square. All right. So let's go back here. So the given in this case is that is a square. So here are my two square. So now we're supposed to look for a circle. Well, if you look at them, like none of those are circle cause they're square. So for this one, once again, 0%. And that's it for that one cause it once you know it's a square, it's impossible for that square to be a circle. And that was yesterday quiz. Any question in regard to yesterday quiz? All right. So up and before we go over the practice exam. <clears throat> so you do kind of want to practice on the practice exam for that way it could help you do well on the second exam because if you're able to do the pretty much the practice exam by yourself without like looking at my notes or looking at the solution like you should do very well on the second exam but if you're struggling with the second exam like you're not going to do well on the test so do practice on the practice exam and go over some Oh no, to help you with the practice exam. All right, so if you look at number one, it says circle the best correlation coefficient value. So we have r is equal to one, we have r is equal to negative 0.8, and we have r is equal to zero. So if we have r is equal to one, you should be expecting pretty much a straight line. If r is equal to negative 0.8, a, you should be expecting a straight line, but it should be going downward. But not all of the points 
are directly in a straight line. Okay, if you look at it, it's not negative one. And if you look at r is equal to zero, r is equal to zero mean is all over the place. So if I'm looking at this one, what does it look more like? A, B, or C? A. Yeah, so A. So you say A is our answer, and that's it. So that one shouldn't be that bad. It's just you knowing what the uh, what the definition of R is. So you just remember R, the closer it is to negative one or positive one, that means you have a strong correlation. The closer it is to zero, that means you have a weak correlation. All right, so that's one. All right, so if you look right here, right here saying show your work. So you want to show your work. So if you look right here, they tell us you may use your calculator to find the sums. So when they're talking about the sums, they're talking about summation of x, summation of y, summation of xy, summation of x squared, and lastly, summation of y squared. So we're gonna go ahead and use our calculator. So we're gonna use class count in order to find these values. So let me go ahead and actually have class count open. Right, let's share class count. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up a table. So we're gonna say, 71, 81, 78, 77, 78, and 92. So now we do Y1, so we'll say 80, 88, 80, 70, Oops, then put 70 plus 79. 75 and 91. So you might want to look through these numbers to make sure you enter all of them correct because you don't want to miss point just because you enter the wrong number. So you kind of give it like a little look through. So that way you know for sure you enter all the right number. So then you go to the second line. And what you want to do, you want to use this keyboard. Here, let me move this out of here. So you want to go to stats. You want to go to events. So remember, if you want to get all of the summations, you want to do two var stats. So right here, if you look at two var stats, it's asking for L1, which is just X1. It's asking for L2, which is just Y1. And it gave me all of my summations. So I'm going to take a minute and write all of these summations down. So you go four, seven, seven, four, eight, four, summation of this. So three, eight, six, six, zero. X squared, so let's do X squared, three, eight, one, six, three. That's the nation of Y squared. Three, nine, three, five, zero. Cool. And also, if you look at it in the very bottom, right above R squared, it also gives you the N value. So if you've been having trouble finding the N value, well, class calc will give you that as well. All right, so once you go to this list, you want to get the summation of x, summation of y, summation of x squared, summation of y squared, summation of x, y, and also get n. All right. Any question on how I got this?
All right, so let me go ahead and go back to my notes. All right, so if you look at part A, it says determine the correlation coefficient. So remember, you still have to show your work. So first thing you want to do, is substitute it into the formula. So for the formula, you go N, multiply by the summation of x, y. This is the summation of x, y. So 3, 8, 6, 6, 0. Minus the summation of x, which is 477. Multiplied by the summation of y, which is 484. So that's the top portion. The bottom portion, you want to do a radical. And then you could do parentheses. So you do parentheses n, n is six. Multiply that by the summation of x squared, which is three, eight, one, six, three. Subtract that by the summation of x, which is 477 and, oops, forgot to square. You square that. And then you multiply that by six times the summation of y squared, which is 39350, minus the summation of y, which is 484. And don't forget to square that. So this is just literally just you getting each of these summation and entering into the formula of R. So you do want to have the formula for R with you handy. So that way, once you see that, you should be able to substitute it. Okay. Any questions so far for the substitution? All right. So once you get this portion, what you can just go ahead and do, go back to class cap. And if you look in the bottom where it says R, it already gave you the R. So you put 0.6680489. So just use the answer that class calc already gave you. And you set that equal to that equation that I just substituted. Because some of you are having trouble just doing the math on that. So just kind of go directly from writing the formula and then you go into you putting the value for r and that's it for a any question for a when we're taking the test do we have to write the formula if it says show your work yes okay all right so let's scroll on down i think all right, so if you look right here, it says use your calculator to find S of X, S of Y, R, Y of bar, and X of bar. So we're gonna find S of X. We're gonna find S of Y. We're gonna find X bar. And we're gonna find Y bar. And then we're gonna find R. Well, R, we already found it over here, 0.668. Point six six eight. So right now what I'm going to go ahead and do, go back to class cop and get these four information. So these information, the two bar stats will give you this information. So I'm going to go back to class cop. All right. So if you look at class cop, if you look at it, it gave me S of X. X of X is 6.9, well, you we get one decimal place. So we'll get 6 point, yeah. So we'll get 6.9 for S of X. If you look right to the right of it, you have S of Y, which is 7.8. Cool. Now what you wanna do, you wanna find the mean. So if you look at mean of X bar, you should get 79.5. Uh, if you look at mean of y, you should get 80.66666, which is just 80.7. Okay. 
any question on where in the calculator do you find the mean of x and y and the standard deviation of x and y? All right, so let's go back to my notes. All right, so if you look right here, it says find the model for the regression line. So if it's asking us to find the model for the regression line, what we have to do, we have to find our slope and we have to find our y-intercept. So to find our slope and our y-intercept, we should have our formula. So I think, uh, yeah. All right, so if you look at it, those are our formula. So I'm gonna just copy them. And then hopefully it should copy over to here. So those are my two formulas that I'm gonna use for the slope. All right, so first I'm gonna find the slope. So to find the slope, we get B. And if you look at it, you say get R. R, we found it to be 0. 0.668. And you want to multiply by standard deviation of Y, which is 7.8. And you divide this by the standard deviation of X, which is 6.9. Everybody get um, so far how I got 0. 0.668 times 7.8 divided by 6.9. All right, yeah. so, what was that? I was saying yes. Oh, yeah. So for this one, all you have to go ahead and do now is go to CASCOG and do this calculation. Or if you just have like a regular calculator, you could do that on your regular calculator. So let me just erase this. So on CASCOG, what you want to do, you want to say 0.668. You want to multiply this by 7.8 and then you press divide by 6.9. After you look at it, we get a slope. So our slope will be 0.76. So we get our slope to be 0.76. And that's all you have to do. And remember, the reason why we're doing this is because the problem says show your work. If the problem wouldn't have said show your work, what you could do, you could do the lin reg button or you do the lin reg function on your calculator and it will give you this information. But since it says show your work, this is how you're gonna show your work by you you're doing 0 0.668 multiplying by 7.8 divided by 6.9. All right, so that's C. So that's the slope. So now what we wanna do, we wanna get the y-intercept. So to get the y-intercept, now we're gonna use this formula over here. So we're gonna say A is equal to y bar. Y bar, I found it to be 80.7. So you get 80.7 minus, if you look at it, now we get the B value. So B is 0.76 multiply by x bar, where x bar is equal to 79.5. 79.5. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this in class count, but any question about how I substituted in the number into the formula for the y-intercept? All right, so let me go ahead and just start and go to class count to do this calculation. So we're gonna say 80.7 
minus 0.76 multiply by 79.5. So if you look at it, you get 20.28. So that's it for our y-intercept. So this is how you will show me work on how to find the y-intercept. You have to show me that you enter it into this equation and then just go ahead and simplify this equation. So let me go back to the notes for that way you can kind of see how I enter the answer. All right, so if you look at this one, I get my slope is equal to 0.76. I get my y-intercept is equal to 20.28. But if you look at the question, that's not what they ask for. They ask for find the model for the regression line. When we want to find the model for the regression line, you want to give it to me like this. Y hat is equal to, which is the slope? Oops. Is equal to B of X plus A. So what you want to do, you want to substitute the B and the A into this equation. So your final answer should be Y hat is equal to 0.76 X plus A, which is 20.28. So that will be your final answer for this question. Any question in regard to that problem? Cool. All right, so let's go to C. So if you look at C, it said, if a student earn, earn a 79 on the midterm, what will be the predicted final exam score they will receive? So if you look right here, it says predicted. So that means we're going to use this model to find that prediction. So we're going to say y hat is equal to 0.76. And instead of putting x, we're going to put 79. And we'll say plus 20.28. So if they're asking me to make a prediction, that's when we want to use the linear model. So since we're doing a prediction, you want to get the linear model and use that linear model to make the prediction. So if I make my prediction, so if I do 0 0.76 multiplied by 79 plus 20.28, you get 80.32. So that's our prediction. So if a student got a 79 on the midterm, our predicted score or our predicted um, exam, final exam score will be that they got 80.32 on the final. And that's all you had to do for C. So for C, since they asked for a prediction, you use the linear model. If you look at D, for D is saying for every 10 point earned on the midterm, what happened on the final, on the final score? So you want to kind of look at the difference between C and D. Because D is essentially saying if I increase it by 10 points, how much point are they going to get for the final exam? Or how much point would their final exam go up by? So for part D, all you have to do is get 0.76 and the X value. And what you want to do, instead of putting X, you're going to put 10. So you go point. 76 times 10 and you get 7.6. So that's what's going to happen to the final score. If for every 10 point earned in the midterm, it increases the final score by 7.6 points. So you kind of know the difference between C and D. And C, you use the whole equation. For D, you only use the equation that has the slope and the x value. All right, but that's it for C and that's it for D. Any question for C or D? All right. So let's go on down.
All right, so for this, I said the following data was from 57 pregnant women. The study measured the digestion period in weeks and the weight of the baby in grams. The following data was found. Right, so a bunch of data was found. So if you look at this one saying, what is the model for the regression line? So for this one, if you actually look at this carefully, they actually give you the model. Because if you look right here, you see how it says intercept and you see it also how it says slope? Well, they're essentially telling us y hat is equal to the slope, which is 222.7 two, two x plus my y-intercept, which is negative 5,144 and 0 0.07. So you have to be able to read this. Also, if you look over here, They also give you the linear model right there. So you just have to just read the table and be able to see like, okay, are they giving me the mean or the standard deviation or more important, are they giving me the slope and the y-intercept? And this one, they are giving you that information. They're also giving you like a lot of other information that you don't need, but you just kind of have to just be able to divide like what you actually need and what's not useful for you. So that's the y-intercept. All right, so let's do B. So for B it says, what is the predicted weight if the gestation period is 41.4 weeks? So if you look at, once again, they want us to make a prediction. So they want us to make a prediction if it's 41.4 weeks. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say y hat is equal to two 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 point seven times x. X in this case is forty one point four plus negative five thousand one hundred forty four point zero seven. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and do this in the calculator. So I'll do this in class cal. So in class calc, we'll say 222.7. We're going to multiply that by 41.4. Then we're going to say plus a negative 5144.07. And if you look at it, that's our answer. So we get y hat is equal to 4,075.71. And that's your final answer for part B. Any question in regard to how we did part B? So let me show you how I put the answer. So if you like, here is my answer. Right, so let's go ahead and do number four. Right, so if you look at part, well, if you look at number four, it said below is a probability distribution of the number of courses students are taking at UCLA. So they're taking one class, two class, three class, four class, five class, or six class. So if you look at it, it says, what is the probability a student would take more than three classes? So if I want it to be more than three classes, which X value do I want to get? Four, five, and six. Yeah, cool. So you want to get four, five, and six. So we want to find the probability that X is bigger than three. 
So you want to get the probability of four, which is, oops, not point, is point four plus the probability of five, which is point 13, plus the probability of six, which is point zero one. So if you add all of those up, you go 0.4 plus 0.13 plus 0.01, you should get 0.54. That's it for A. Any question in regard to A? No. All right, so let's do B. So for B, it says, what are the probabilities that a student would take at most two classes? So we're right here saying at most two classes. So at most mean two of the highest they're gonna take, but you can actually take anything lower than two. So for this one, you wanna say probably that X will be less than or equal to two, which will equal to 0.3 plus 0.12. So if you do 0 0.3 plus 0 0.12, you get 0 0.42. And that's it for B. Any question for B? All right, let's just see. So it says, what is the probability that a student would take less than six classes? So less than six classes mean, oops, it mean all of these. There we go. So we want them to take less than six classes. So we want to get one, two, three, four, five. But what we're gonna do for this one, we're gonna do the complement of this. So probably that X is less than six, A is equal to one minus 0 0.01. Oh, we can't see your screen. I meant like you have to scroll down. Can you see it now? No. Yeah, so let's stop share and reshare. Oh no, you just have to scroll down. Uh, Alright, so what we want to do, because we already know if you add up all the probability, because if you remember about like how to check to see if it's a probability distribution, if you add up all the probability, it should add up to one. So since we know they should add up to one, and since the only probability we're not getting is the probability of six, so we can say one minus the probability of six, and you'll get 0.99. Now you could also just add all of these up, and you'll still get the 0.99, but it's like a shortcut way of how to do it. All right, but that's it for part C. So for part C, we should have gotten 0.99. Any question on part C? All right, lastly, let's do D. So for D, it says, what is the expected value? So for the expected value, all you have to do is get the X value and multiply by P of X. So let me actually do a table. So we have to get X multiplied by P of X. So let me try and see if I could wrangle up the thing. So all we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go X multiplied by P of X. So we're gonna say one times 0.3, which is 0.3. Then we're gonna say two multiplied by 0.12, that's 0.24. Then you're gonna say three times 0 0.04, you're gonna get 0.12. Then you're gonna get four times 0.4, which is 1.16, oh sorry, 1.6. Then you get five multiplied by 0.13, that's gonna give you 0.65. And lastly, if you do six times 0.01, you get 0.06. So 
So that's the first step you want to do in order to find the mean. Once you multiply each individual value by the x and the p of x, what you want to go ahead and do to find the mean is add them. Let's see. Let's So you get 0.3 added to 0.24. Alright, so what you want to do, you just want to add all of these numbers. So I'm going to go over to class calc and yes, add them up. So we'll say 0.3 plus 0.24 plus 0.12 plus 1.6 plus 0.65 plus 0.06. And if you look at it, you get um, 2.97. So we'll say expected value is equal to 2.97. So that'll be it for that problem. Any question on the expected value equals to 2.97? Wait. All right. So for the test, don't worry about the variance. The variance is not going to be on the test. So if you're having a hard time finding the variance, well, lucky for you, it's not going to be on the test. So don't worry about variance. So let's go on to problem number five. All right, so for problem number five, it says below is the probability distribution of patient admitted at the USC Medical Center Hospital. Let X be the number of days at the hospital. Show work. All right, so first thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and find the mean or the expected value. So to find the expected value, we're going to do the table. So we're going to say x times p of x. And let's go ahead and do this. Oh, well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and multiply. So if I do 1 times 0.34, well, 1 times 0.34 is 0.34. If I do 2 times 0.05, that should give me 0.10. If I do 3 times 0.01, you get 0.03. If you do 4 times 0.3, you get 1.2. If you do 5 times 0.10, you get 0.50. And lastly, if you do 6 times 0.20, you're going to get 1.2. So to find this expected value, we have to get 0.34 plus 0.10 plus 0.03 plus 1.2 plus 0.50 plus 1.2. And what we want to do, we want to add all of those numbers up. So I'm going to take a minute and add these up. So we get 0.34 plus 0.10 plus 0.03 plus 1.2 plus 0.50 plus 1.2. So if you add them all up, you should get 3.37. And that's it for A. Any question on how to find the expected value for A? All right. Also, don't worry about the standard deviation. It's not gonna be on the test, so. 
Don't worry about it. So let's do C. So if you look at C, so what is the probability X is greater than five? So X is greater than five, that means it's six. So we just wanna find the probability of six. So for this one is 0.20. And that'll be it for that one because the only number greater than five is six. So that way you only get six. All right, so let's do D. So if you look at D, it says X is less than or equal to three. So if X is less than or equal to three, that means you wanna get three all the way down. So three all the way down are these numbers over here. So what you wanna do, you wanna get those probability and add them all up. So you get 0.34, Add it to 0 0.05 and add it to 0 0.01 if I remember correctly. Yeah, there you go. So if I do 0 0.34 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.01, you'll get 0.40. And that's it for E. Well, sorry, for D. Any question in regard to D? All right, so let's do E. So for E, it says, what are the probabilities that the stay will be at most four? So at most four, at most four means four is the max, but it could be anything shorter than four. So for that, let me get my eraser. For at most four, you want to get all of these. So you want to get 0 0.34, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.30. 0 0.34 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.30. Okay, so the same at most four. So you just include four all the way down to one. So if you add all of those number up, you actually get 0.70. So there's a 70% chance that will occur. And that's it for E. Any question in regard to E? All right, so let's do F. So F says, what is the probability that the stay at the hospital will be at least five days? So at least means this number over here, that's the minimum. So since that's the minimum, that means that's the sh uh, shortest amount of time they could stay there, but it could actually be longer than five days. So for that one, you're gonna want five and six. So if I get the probability of five, then you have to add it to the probability of six and we're done. So what was the probability? 0 0.10 and 0 0.2, 0 0.10, 0 0.2. So if you do 0 0.10 plus 0 0.2, you get 0 0.30. And that's all you had to do for F. Any question in regard to F? All right, too late. So that's it for the practice exam. So if you look at the practice exam, it's not that bad. So do kind of go over like linear regression, like linear regression gonna be a big thing for this chapter. So you do wanna make sure that you understand linear regression. So make sure that you know how to find the linear regression model by hand, but also know how to do it with the calculator because if it doesn't say anything about doing it by hand, you're just going to want to use your calculator in order to do it. Um, any questions so far in regard to practice exam or the test? Is there anything going to be like yesterday's quiz on there? With no. Like, no? Okay. All right, so let me show you. So for the exam, the exam is going to be on Monday. So I'm going to have essentially just office hour from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then your, your test is going to start off at 12 p.m. So you're going to have from 12 p.m. all the way to 11.59, 11 11.59 p.m. on Monday to be able to complete the test. 
But just remember, once you start the test, pretty much you have 90 minutes to complete the test. Right. And for the test, it could be slightly different this time. Because this time, there's only going to be some question where you have to upload your answer. Because I'm going to do a mixture of problem where some of the problem you can just enter the answer onto Blackboard. And there could be some question where I'm going to ask you to upload an image. So if I were you, I will do the image first and then do the problem that you have to do. Um, that you can just enter the answer onto Blackboard. Because you are going to have 90 minutes, so I do expect all of those images to be on, on the Blackboard. Because in 90 minutes, you should be able to upload your solution. So for this one, all you have to do is click on exam number two. And for your test, your test is going to be a test number two. So not gonna be exam number two because I already hit that one. It could be test number two. So for test number two, yes, no, it could be a mixture of some of them you have to show your work, but some of them you don't have to show your work. So you can just enter your answer onto Blackboard. So there is one thing for that because um, say if you're doing the linear model. If you are doing the linear model, the way I want you to enter the linear model is like this. So you say y is equal, and then put whatever your slope is. So if your slope is like three, put three x plus whatever your y-intercept is, your y-intercept, whatever. Let's say it's 10. So for the test, you're not gonna have to put the hat on it because like probably most of you won't be able to put on the hat. So don't worry about putting the hat for the linear model. You put y is equal to, and then you put the slope in the y intercept. All right, uh, any question in regard to the test? Are you going to post the pre-test or the pre-exam that you did with us in a little yeah. bit? Yeah, I'll put, it, I'll put it in this folder right here. So just go to exam number two. And I'll put the pre-exam solution in, in this folder. So here, I'll do it right now. Let's see. And also just remember for the homework, homework will be due on Monday. And also all of the activity will be due on Monday. And that's when I'll start grading them because if you kind of noted for the activity, I haven't graded any of the activity because I'm going to just waiting for everybody to submit it. So that way I know that the people who were going to submit it has already submitted it. And that way I could check their solution. So we'll call this pre exam to solution. All right, good. So if you click right here, you'll have all of the solution that we just went over right now. All right, and let me see, because I think you also have your final quiz for this section today, because you are going to have quiz number 10. So for quiz number 10, you have to do quiz number 10. It will get started in, what is that? 
35 minutes and it'll be due by the end of today. So whenever you have a free 30 minutes to be able to do this, just go on to Blackboard, do quiz number 10 and you do it and you have to upload the solution onto Blackboard. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. Uh, any question about anything? So when you mean upload, it's like how we put up our like activities and how we do the quizzes like that? Yeah, but for this one, you're only gonna upload the solution for that one particular problem. So you do your solution for that problem on a sheet of paper take a picture and then just upload it for that, for that one um, problem. Cause there are gonna be two problems that you're gonna have to do that for. So you're gonna have to pretty much show your work on a piece of paper, take the picture for that problem and then just upload it. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, any other questions? If we're having trouble in the homework, can we go to the office hours? Yeah, like um, I'm gonna like as soon as this class thing ends, I'm gonna close this out and then I'm gonna open up uh, the office hour. I don't think today there's office hour, so just click on the office hour that. Just click on any office hour and I'll be there. And any other questions? Can you go over the activity 11? Activity 11. Yeah. What question on activity number 11? Uh, the first one. All right. So let's do number one on this activity. La, 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 la. Right. So that's the first activity. Yeah. All right. So if you look at A, it says find the probability of two drinks. So you want to find this. So first thing you want to do is just add up all the numbers. So you go 0.41 plus 0.38 plus 0.08 plus 0.02. So let me go ahead and add that. So 0.41 plus 0.38 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.02, you go 0.89. So if you go the probability of 0, 1, 3, and 4, add up to 0 0.89. So that means 2 has to be 0 0.11. So that's how you find A. Because you know if you add up all the number, they have to add up to 1. So if you do 0 0.89 plus 11, that would give you one, or if you do one minus 0.89, you get 0.11. So that's how you have to do A. So if you look at B, B said probably that X is less than two. So X is less than two in these two scenario. So for this one, you have to just add this. So it'll go 0 0.41 plus 0.38, that give you 0 0.79. And that's part B. Any question for part B? No. So if you look at part C, part C said x is less than or equal to zero. So there's no number less than zero, but there is a number equal to zero, which is zero. So that's 0 0.41. Now if you do D, D saying probably that x is bigger than three. So x is bigger than three, well, the only x that's bigger than three is four. So you go 0 0.02. And 
And lastly, for E, it says find the probability that X is equal to three or X is equal to four. So that means you have to get the probability of three and you have to add it to the probability of four. So you get 0 0.08 plus 0 0.02 and you get 0 0.10. And that's number one. Any other questions? So you said to um, 0.89 minus 11, and then, or I mean, you get minus one. You said something about one. Yeah, because if you add all of these up, they should add up to one. So if you want to find the probability of two, you have to do one minus 0.89, and that give you 0.11. So that's how we got this one over here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to close out this meeting. Uh, I'm going to start off a meeting um, under office hour. So if you do have any question about anything else, you can just drop by. If you don't have any question about anything, well, I'll see you on Monday. And just remember on Monday, it's essentially, it's not gonna be a class, so you could be off of the hour from 10 to 12 p.m. And then after that, you're gonna have your, your well, you're gonna be able to take the second exam. Okay, you're gonna have from anywhere from 12 p.m. all the way to 11.59 p.m. in order to be able to do the exam. But once you start the exam, you're only gonna have 90 minutes to do the exam. All right, so that's it for today. I'll see everybody on Monday or Tuesday.